Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to those of you who are joining us from across the world today for another session of Mindful Mondays. Uh, we are delighted to have with us Andreas Giorgio, the internet vegan cooking sensation behind Veg Andreas. He is popular healthy plant-based recipes, fitness workouts, and videos to improve mental health and have garnered a large and growing uh, global following. We're, we are also joined today by Serena Burgess, uh, a, a British Wheel of Yoga teacher, certified international acro yoga teacher. Serena has been practicing yoga for 20 years, 13 of those. She has been uh, working as an instructor in both the UK and in Sri Lanka. Um, she is also going to join us today and we're going to we're going to do the mind body thing today. Um, and we're going to start. Obviously, Andres is going to do some cooking. Uh, Serena is going to do some uh, movements so you can be, you know, uh, you can nourish your, your body as well as your, your uh, spirit with the food that Andres is going to prepare for us. So we're looking forward to a, sort of an exciting uh, uh, session of Mindful Mondays. Welcome to Pandemic Punditry, Andres and Serena. Hi, thank you. You're welcome. Andres, can you hear us okay? Hi, Andres, can you hear us? I, I think he can hear us. Can you hear us? Maybe not. Andres, can you hear us? Andres, can you hear us? I think we're doing a very poor job of sign language, Kartika. You might want to. Might. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? <laughs> okay, I think, he, I think he suddenly realized he had muted himself and the mic. Okay. Okay, Andres, I think you can hear us now, right? You can hear us okay? Andres, we can hear you. Uh, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello. We did hear him before quite clearly. Andres, can you hear us? You might have muted the sound. I don't know. Hello? Oh, yes, we can hear you now. Hi. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Oh, I can see them. We, we, uh, we can hear you pretty clearly. I don't know whether he can hear us. So uh, just let him know we can hear him, but uh, maybe he's muted up or reduced the volume. He can't hear us. Yeah, he can't hear us Yeah, at all. Okay. Oh, they can hear me. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the joys of live television or live uh, live streaming, right? We get to see all the all the bloopers all in once. Uh, Serena, do can I Hello. can I start with you while? Uh, yeah, hi, Andres. Hello, can you hear us? Andres, can you hear us? No, I don't think he can. You, you want to suggest Hello? that he? Uh, Hello, hi, can you hear us? Can't even come back on. Yeah, that's right. Good idea. Uh, he should come back on. Okay. Kathike, want to let him know that? Sorry, guys, just hold on. Do we just to get the audio sorted out a bit? Okay. The joys of technology, people, joys of technology. <laughs> okay. Hi, Serena. So while we have you, yes. um, all right, I, I know you're a really popular yoga instructor um, in Sri Lanka, and you've been doing this for a considerably long time. Um, so how did you and yoga meet? I mean, uh, was that a chance meeting, or is that something that you always sort of focused on? No, it was. It was. Um... Hello? Hi, Andres. Can we hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. wonderful. <laughs> Shall I answer? Okay, well, I don't know what happened before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Serena. Just answer go ahead, it. go ahead, answer the question, Serena. No problem. Yeah, no, it was it was quite a chance okay. meeting. I um was living in London and really, really super busy kind of London single lifestyle, and I sort of just thought oh, I need to do something in the week that's a bit exercisey and a bit for me and um, I got really lucky and I met this yoga teacher who essentially I just wanted to be her and it sort of sparked this love of yoga um, and it just went from there and I, it, yoga kind of grows on you so I was kind of going once a week and then I started going three times a week and then like five times a week and then I was like oh wow <laughs> 
time to be a yoga teacher and that's when i decided to to train as a teacher so you you're doing it as often as five times a week huh mm, i was spending like a whole of saturday at the ashram in patni uh, there's a shivananda ashram there and i would kind of go in the morning and do a sanskrit course and then i would do cooking and i'd chop vegetables for them and then i do a class and yeah i'd spend a whole day in in that once a week and then go three times a week in the evenings so oh, um, okay yeah right. i kind of get a bit obsessed <laughs> so you you so you and yoga met when you figured you you wanted to be a little healthy um mm -hmm. and you sort of got obsessed with sort of the benefits that obviously was accruing to to your practice and then um you know at some point you also made the decision then to sort of become an instructor and uh, and 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 spread the spread the good uh, the, the good uh, to all others as well well yeah when you benefit from it so much you sort of think well maybe other people will will enjoy it too as much as i do or yeah. nearly as much as i do <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I know we're going to you know, talk to you uh, in, a, in a little bit. We're going to actually have you sort of uh, demonstrate a couple of moves. And I know that Kartika being a, 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 a very strong practitioner of yoga herself uh, and uh, is going to sort of uh, follow instructions and, and, and uh, do those movements with us. Uh, oh, sorry, with you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually be uh, sitting very comfortably on my chair watching the both of you uh, do this and talking to Andres, but uh, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And Andres, if you are sort of ready to sort of uh, answer questions and your audio video is working, happy to sort of ask you a little bit about your background as well. So how did you, I, I know you've traveled to Sri Lanka. I heard just uh, you know introduction. Um, so you are a, you're from Cyprus. Um, what sort of made you get into the vegan food scene? He seems to have gone off of air lobby. Oh, okay. So he's still trying to figure out his audio. Okay. All right. Sh should we then kick off with the uh, with the yoga? Maybe that's what we should do. Hey, you forgot to tell people your co-star is uh, your co-host is on the mat. Oh yes. Well, I think they can figure that out. They can pretty much see you on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kartika is on the mat. Kartika, you want to tell a little bit about your sort of why you know why you're doing yoga and and your your the fact that Zarina uh, is an instructor with you or is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Your so, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously uh, I, I do yoga with Serena uh, she's my instructor and because she doesn't like to be called a yogi I'm not gonna call her that <laughs> I don't mind yogi I don't like guru oh, okay. Sorry, no, okay. Okay. Yeah. so she's my yogi practitioner person and um, yeah I mean I started with her as soon as the lockdown hit globally uh, sometime in April and honestly, it really helped me be more physically resilient and mentally resilient. And also being stuck at home, it helped me move my body, you know, where I probably wouldn't have if I'd just been a couch potato. Okay. So what are, I want to just introduce a little bit about what, what are you planning to do today and these movements, what, what are they for? And then, you know, oh. maybe a little introduction or context around what you're going to do. Yeah. So um, I've been sort of, looking at this idea of resilience um, since the lockdown started it's been something that i've called on in my own life just with you know we, we were stuck at home and we've had to pivot and change our you know our tactics in terms of work and move everything online there was just a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty that came with the pandemic right and, um and so I found myself just using the tools that I have in my yoga toolkit um, every day to center and calm and stay in the present and, and do all of that stuff. So um, something I thought would really suit you, Lavi, was um, because I know you're only able to work with your fingers, <laughs> is um, it's what I call the soothing finger meditation. Everyone can do it, it's super easy. And it's really, really um, calming. Um, okay. And lots of people find meditation, sort of sitting and clearing their mind quite difficult. Um, but this practice gives you something to do with your hands and your fingers. And when Kathy said you were only going to do finger meditation, I was like, this is the perfect thing to show them. And, okay. Um, and the thing is, your fingers basically have a lot of nerve endings in them. Right. So 
what we do in this meditation essentially is stroke the fingers and that in turn soothes the nervous system. Okay. Um, so you should feel like you're calmer once you've done it, but you also have something to concentrate on. So we're combining breath and a little movement and stroking the nervous system and the whole thing kind of adds up into a soothing meditation. So I'm not going to do a whole version of this, but I'll just teach you what you need to do to do the soothing finger meditation. So essentially you're going to bring the base of your, uh, so your thumb into the base of your index finger. Okay. And you'll have your hands probably on your lap, but I'll just keep my hands like this to show you. Okay. And you inhale and stroke your thumb up to the tip of your index finger and you'll exhale as you bring your finger, your thumb down. And then you'll move across to the next finger, inhaling and exhaling. Move it across, inhaling, exhaling, and across to the little finger, inhaling, and exhaling. I'm just going to move my camera down a little bit, put my hands on my lap, and we'll just go back through the fingers in the other direction. Sorry, you can't see my face, but so we can inhale up the little finger, exhale, bring it down. Inhale, exhale, close your eyes, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. And so that's one round going cross and back. Okay. I normally recommend people do three rounds. And it usually takes about three, maybe four minutes. And by the end of it, if you've closed your eyes, you've really focused on what you're doing with your fingers and your breath, you should feel quite calm and relaxed. Carthy did it properly. How did you feel? Yeah, I felt really good. I'm almost sleepy now. I saw Andrea doing it as well. Yeah, yeah, I was quite <laughs> pleased with that. And it's fun. I always give people homework with this one and I say, go and teach it to somebody else because it's really easy. If you've got kids, teach it to your kids. It's super soothing, super easy, and it's perfect for you, Lavi, because it only involves your fingers and your breath. Yeah, Lavi, are you there? You seem a little frozen. He's frozen. <laughs> yeah, he looks frozen. Um, so, Andreas, do you want to talk us through what you're doing today? Yeah, sure. So, um, I'm going to be making a whole foods plant-based recipe um and it's going to be a smoky barbecue chickpea bowl um, with some sweet potatoes and some veggies in there as well um, it's quite high in protein high in fiber um, and overall really good for you okay so wh while andres is prepping uh, uh andres you want to walk us through sort of the, re the ingredients and all that first or yeah of course so um the first thing we're going to do is start by peeling and chopping some sweet potatoes so we can get them in the oven nice and soon um while they're in the oven, we'll basically um, use some chickpeas and we're going to fry those off. Um, we're going to add some onion and um, red cabbage to the dish. There's going to be a little bit of dash of barbecue sauce, um, some garlic, some seasonings, and then a big helping of spinach as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'll start by peeling the uh, sweet potatoes. So you would you I hope our part of the world has already had their dinner. If not, you're going to be really hungry by the time Andreas finishes. <laughs> so you, you peel the uh, sweet potatoes. Um, yeah. And uh, if if people are having a hard time uh, in any kind of sort of uh yam or, or or similar thing would be work what will work okay as well yeah, right definitely uh white potato is fine um yam works well as well any okay. sort of like starchy vegetable you can substitute for that okay so you uh, carrots as well if you wanted and the temperature of the oven would be what if they were to preheat it uh before um putting yeah, it in so i just preheated it um to about 180 degrees celsius 
180 degrees Celsius, okay. Yeah, depending if it's a fan or if it's just a conventional oven, it might take a little bit um, longer. So in my oven, it will probably take around 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Um, but that could vary slightly. And uh, do you need to sort of prick the, uh, uh, the the potato or anything like that, or you just put it just like that? No, to... sweet potatoes are generally quite soft, so okay. um, you don't really need to um, pierce them or anything. Prick them at all. Okay. They're fine like that. You can just roughly peel them. Um, you can even leave the skins on as well for added nutrients if the skins look like they're in quite good condition. Okay. Um, then you can leave the skins on as well. Okay. Um, so once you've you've peeled them, we're just going to cut them cut them in kind of small, roughly sized chunks. Okay. And these these are the size would be uh, consistent with what you want to put on in the bowl, is it? Oh, there we go. One inch. Yeah, just, yeah half, about one inch. One and a half inch. Okay. We're just going to do that for both sweet potatoes. And, and the, the dish I'm making today will probably. Um, it's going to make about one big portion or two small size portions, but you can of course um, scale up and all the ingredients if you wanted to make more. So this would feed maybe one person, uh, a very very healthy one person uh, portion, or or even uh, for two if you were going to um, yeah. just split this. Okay. If you wanted a small lunch, I reckon two people. If it was for more like a, a bigger dinner, then um, if you're hungry, you could definitely eat this by yourself. Okay. Um, so um, while Andreas cuts that up, we have a question from the audience for Serena. Um, okay. Inhale and exhale, was that through the nose or was it through the mouth? No, in and out through the nose. Obviously, if you've got a blocked nose or something, then you might have to use your mouth. But generally in yoga, we tend to work mostly in and out through the nostrils. Yeah. And by the way, I must confess that was easy for me to do. <laughs> I, I was I was minimally challenged reaching that finger, as you can see. My fingers are not very long, so so I I did have to cup them. But that that, that there was a bit of a challenge in that. But I figured out that that still okay is okay. So. You stretched it and it was fine, was it? Lovely? It stretched it, yes. So that that was a nice yoga stretch. Maybe I need to do some yoga stretches on my finger before I start, but okay, that, that, that I think works. So Andrea, tell us what's going on now. So basically I've just drizzled um, about one tablespoon of olive oil um, over the sweet potatoes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna add some seasoning, thyme. You can use any seasoning you want really, any sort of herb. Uh, rosemary works really well as well. Um, or some, any type of mixed herbs works nice on sweet potatoes. Okay. And these are dried so, herbs, obviously, right? Because they're yeah, going to go right. in the oven. You can use okay. fresh herbs as well if you've got some. Okay. Um, but yeah, dry herbs work just as well. Um, and then I'm just going to add some pepper as well. And and those of us from sort of the the South Asian part of the world or the spi where the spices are more, you could you could dress this up with with a with a little bit of chili powder or anything else that you yeah. want to sort of infuse yeah, flavor. Yeah. I might even I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika as well just to give it a nice smoky flavor as well. Okay. So, uh, Serena, if you're going back to you for a second, um, if somebody wanted to sort of start a, a yoga program, uh, I mean, people think of all the cont contortionist movements and sort of the, uh, you know, and, and, and if somebody's quite not used to doing, doing that, do you have programs that are sort of tailor-made for somebody who's never done yoga, uh, is a hard time getting on the floor, let alone, you know, getting into a lotus position or any of these things? Uh, is there other ways to sort of, in, you know, incrementally add uh, level, layers of complexity and flexibility to the whole thing? Uh, absolutely. So it's interesting. I've, I've talked yoga to people on chairs. I've taught yoga to people on a bed because they've been unable to lie down on the floor, but it's still beneficial to do some of the lying postures. Um, and obviously I, I teach from beginner level up. Um, oh, I don't know if you can still hear me. Yeah, we still hear you. And, yeah, so I, I teach from beginner level up. And, um, and, and yeah, I think the thing to remember with yoga is people get a bit intimidated because they think they have to be flexible um, to start with. But the point is that you develop your flexibility and your strength 
as you practice. So you start with, with basic postures, you start with learning even just how to sit comfortably. Um, that can be a challenge for people. Um, and then it goes from there and you just sort of develop um, your strength and your flexibility as you go along. Um, okay. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's what makes it accessible for everybody. So while uh, Andreas is chopping up some onions, I can see, right, Andreas? You're yeah, peeling some onions. Yeah, I've just got the um, sweet potatoes in the oven for about 15 minutes, set a timer. I'm okay. now going to dice an onion um, that's going to go in the pan to start frying off. Okay, so you're dicing an onion. Uh, so, Serena, um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, I, you hear of various different yoga schools, Hatha Yoga, and, you know, I think you mentioned Shivananda was one place you got trained. Uh, do people need to worry about the various schools or is that something for an instructor to worry about or 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 are, are there different yoga styles or, or schools that one should sort of go to if you were a, say a ranked beginner um so basically hatha is an umbrella term um and essentially if someone says they're teaching a hatha class it should consist of asana which is the postures pranayama which is breath work some meditation and some relaxation. So Hatha isn't really a school, it's just a term. Okay. Um, the other schools, essentially it's, it's just different um, combinations or different sequences of that type of yoga. Um, so Shivananda is the Hatha tradition. It's just got its own sequence that we do every class. Um, Bikram uses Hatha yoga sequences or hot yoga because it's not cool to call it Bikram anymore. Um, <laughs> I, they're all Hatha sort of postures, you know, sequenced according to the style of the school. Ashtanga, the same. Kundalini is a bit different, doesn't use so many of the Hatha postures, has its very own lineage. Um, but as a beginner if you find a hatha yoga class and it says for beginners then you should be fine <laughs> okay um, and then as you develop you'll realize oh if i want a stronger practice i might do ashtanga or if i want a practice where we do more chanting i might choose shivananda so as you sort of realize what appeals to you that's when you um might choose which school you want to um practice with okay so All right, back to you, Andreas. Yeah, so um, just dice an onion, and we're just going to cut some red cabbage as well. It adds a nice bit of colour to the dish as well. Okay. Um, so you don't have to use red cabbage. Um, it can be white cabbage if you want, um, but it does add like, some nice colour to the dish. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of red cabbage myself, especially when you, if you char it quite, quite, uh, quite well, it actually infuses a very, very good flavour to it. Yeah, I, I really like it. I've only recently started using it um, a lot more in my cooking. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I've used more and more recently. Okay. So, um, Kathika, can you explain a little bit? I mean, you, you've been a, the student of uh, Serena's, right? And I, I know you're, a, you're an ex advanced uh, uh, yoga person. Um, but um, in terms of sort of this whole concept that we are promoting, uh, on mindful Mondays, which is the concept of sort of, you know, be mindful one day of the week about the, the food that you eat, the sort of uh, actions that you take, the things that you wear, the things that you use. Um, and that's a sort of, you know, to focus uh, people who are maybe not as committed as maybe uh, Serena or you were to, to yoga or to even healthy eating, that maybe you take, give your body and yourself a break one day of the week, pick Monday to be that day, and then do something sort of mindful right you know it's a mindful sort of moment so what is the connection and maybe serena you can also interject what's the connection between sort of mindfulness and yoga so I, serena, I know that... you can serena can give like an uh, expert opinion and i can give like a student's opinion so serena do you want to start yeah i mean for me that connection it, it kind of goes beyond the yoga mat anyway um it's the idea of sort of really trying to be present in each of the things that you're doing um, and somehow when you come onto your yoga mat you have to focus you have to you know to find your balance you have to focus your mind to um, 
you know, to access the muscles you need, strength. You you have to be focused. So it's it's sort of almost by default a mindful physical practice because. Um, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not like you're sort of jogging yeah. in the gym or just going through a routine with headphones on your head, right? So it's a little bit yeah. more uh, in tune with, with with the inner you. Andres, you're you're, you're sorting some uh, onions chick now, or sorry? Chick wedding. Yeah, just just wash some chickpeas up. Um, just okay. So you use the can, off. you dr uh, rinse it out of the can. Yeah, that's right. You can use dried ones if you um, let them soak overnight. Okay. Um, but just for quickness, I've got some canned ones here. Just make sure you rinse them well. Right. Um, added some olive oil to a pan, um, and then I'm going to add my onion now um, to let that fry off a little bit, get a nice little color. Okay, so wh while you're frying off and getting that into a sort of a nice uh, golden color, I assume. Uh, yeah. Uh, so back to back to you, Serena. Um, mm. This is like a cooking with yoga show already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, Serena, if you were sort of, um, I mean, I, I assume that, uh, have you got a couple of other movements that you can show while he's sorting the onions that will take a few yeah. few minutes? Yeah, sure. We can do that. I want to hear Carthy's uh, opinion about mindfulness. Ah, oh, good one. Okay, all right. Um, so for me, uh, I remember very early on when I first started yoga, my first yoga instructor told me something that stayed with me for like until today, which is if you can't get your body to listen to you, how are you going to get like people to listen to you, your team to listen to you, your boss to listen to you, basically anyone outside of yourself to listen to you, if your own muscles, your body parts don't want to do what you want you to do. So mindfulness for me was all about trying to get my body to listen to what I wanted it to do, like because sometimes it just doesn't want to. And Serena can attest to this because they're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> it's like it's nearly there. Yeah, it's nearly there, but it doesn't want to go any further. You know what I mean? So yeah, so it's all about getting your body to listen to you, and the more your body starts listening to you the more you feel like you can control other things around you that happen to you. Okay, so let's, just, let's, sorry, go ahead. Quickly yeah, add to that, this whole mindfulness thing, you know, it, our yoga isn't just about postures and movement. I mean, it's, it's quite meditative to be moving with your breath, but we do sit and we focus our minds and try and, you know, meditate or do our finger meditation or a contemplation. And all of that is part of mindfulness. It's all about being in the present moment and observing your thoughts or observing your breath. And um, it, it's not just the movement. I find that mindfulness weaves in and out of everything um, if we let it. Well, well so taken. Added in the chickpeas? Yeah, I've just added the chickpeas. Awesome. To the pan mm. as well. Let them roast off a little bit. It gives them a nicer taste and just straight from the can. Um, and I'll add in the red cabbage now as well. So have you put any seasoning, like salt or anything like that? Or is it enough salt already from... Yeah, not just yet. I'm going to um, add some smoked paprika, garlic and chilli. Okay. Right now you're just uh, sweating the vegetables. Yeah. And, and getting a little bit of... Are you is a plan to get some caramelization on that, or you just want to? Yeah, I've got the, the onions are nicely caramelized, so they're going to taste nice and sweet. Okay, um, and they'll go nice with the sweet potatoes as well. And then the spinach and the cabbage kind of give it um, a kind of a nice, um, nice color as well for the dish. Okay, great. So so uh, maybe uh, while while that is sort of uh, getting to a, a nice point, maybe the maybe um, Serena, you can you can share another moment with us. That's not just a finger one. Oh yeah, sure. I can. Although I want to say that Andreas is very mindfully look, he's concentrating very hard, and you can see the mindfulness going into his food. I love it. Yeah, I do. I do like that with cooking. It's kind of like a therapeutic exercise. It's like a meditation, right? Exactly yeah good that's what i meant by mindfulness kind of creeps in whenever you let it be in the moment especially when you cook because if you're not you're going to burn it 
Yeah, you see that? That's my my. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking, I forget and I go somewhere else, and then it's all over. <laughs> so, what is it? What is the new movement that you have next? Okay. Moment so I um I actually I, I was telling Carthy about this. I've got a little Instagram challenge going on. Um, in the next week or so, I'm going to start posting about it. And the, it's a little sequence of 10 postures for um, boosting energy. Um, and um, so I've got a couple of things going on at the moment. I've, I've got a resilience course that has all sorts of things involved in it. Um, but I thought I'd share some of the postures from the energy boosting sequence. Um, Great. Kathy, if that's OK with you? Yeah, 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 I'm good. So, right. so Serena, you're going to do it, and then Kathika is going to sort of follow on, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kathy okay, knows how it works. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to just sit there and watch Andreas cook. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. okay. Maybe Andreas can talk us through what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. Andreas just put some paprika in the in the food, I think. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Go ahead, guys. Okay. So. Sorry, Andres. We're a bunch of noisy women who are trying to do yoga. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, Kathy, we're going to come onto our mats. Okay. Hands, um, and knees. And I'm just going to take us through some of the postures at the beginning of this sequence. Maybe not all ten, if that's okay. Yeah. So we're going to work with our breath. We're going to inhale, lift the chin, uh, chest and the chin and the hips at the back and we're going to exhale pull the belly button up towards the ceiling drop the head and the neck you can do a couple of those inhaling and exhaling inhaling and exhaling so this is articulating all the vertebrae in our spine it's connecting us with our breath and just bringing us to center before we begin the practice we're going to shift our weight into our hands now and step back with the feet into plank breathing here in our plank weight over the arms belly pulled in shoulders engaged and then we're going to lift the hips, step the feet forward ever so slightly, coming into our down facing dog. And I always say with down dog, if your um, heels are struggling to reach the floor and it's pushing your weight forward, you need to bend your knees. And let's just breathe in our down dog for a moment. Down dog um, decompresses the vertebrae of the spine because you're upside down, you have the weight of your head releasing the spine. So you want to find this nice straight back. We can reach the heels back down. And we're gonna step our right foot forward. So I'm modifying a little from the sequence. We're gonna bring the back knee down, lift the chest and point the toe. Breathing here. This is a really good stretch for our hips and particularly the hip flexor of your back leg. And then we're going to step it back into our dog. Wow, well, you want to check in on Andreas? Yes, I am about to do that. So Andreas, you are you and put in I saw some some spices yeah, in there. That's right. So I've added um this is kind of a very lazy way to use garlic. It's already chopped and uh, in a little kind of uh, white wine vinegar. Okay. Um, so I just added a heat tablespoon of that, um, and here's just some chopped red chilies. I've added about half a teaspoon. If you can handle heat a little bit better than me, then you're welcome to put more. Okay, so you, you, um, you could chop up like three or four cloves of garlic. You can finally chop three or four cloves yeah. of garlic if you don't have the sort of pre-chopped. You exactly. can also chop up any kind of red chili or a green chili. If it, it, whatever yeah. fancies you. Yeah, red or green I think would be fine. Um, this is okay. just red. And I put about half a teaspoon, but you, you can put a lot more than that if you, okay. if you like your spice. And and then you put some, uh, uh, you did you put some uh, salt as well in there or not? Uh, no, I usually don't put any salt, to be honest. I think 
especially okay. in Western culture, salt is in a lot of foods. Okay. Um, so I try to avoid adding it as much as possible. I'll okay. add a little bit um, at the end on the overall dish. Okay. Um, but I'll season with some pepper um, just after I've added a little bit of this um, barbecue sauce. Okay. Um, Jack yeah, Daniel's barbecue sauce. Okay. And I'm sure this, the barbecue sauce itself has seasoning in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it comes with seasons in it. And this is actually like a, a Jack Daniels one as well. So, um, but all the alcohol obviously cooks off in cooking. Right. So if so, you have now um, chickpeas, uh, onions, finely diced, red cabbage. Yeah. Um, sort of caramelized in a tablespoon of olive oil, some smoked paprika. Yeah. Um, and you put in the minced garlic, the minced chili. Yeah. Have I missed and, anything? And just a drizzle of barbecue sauce at the end. And it is a barbecue sauce. Okay. That's and it. that's that's what you have in the dish right now. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. Um, and then Black pepper. Sorry. Black ground pepper. Yeah, that's right. And then um, then all the, all you need for it is some a handful of spinach, um, and we'll let that wilt down. Okay. The sweet potatoes are pretty much done now, so they're just resting. But you can just get this is already pre-washed, but if you just make sure you wash your spinach properly first. Right. Add a good handful of that, and that will um, that will wilt down um, into kind of the chickpea dish as well. Okay. And this is uh, the baby spinach uh, when wilted down or cooked down is quite quite uh, quite appetizing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love spinach. It's good to add your kind of leafy greens to as many meals as you can. Yep. So, so there were two movements that you just did, Serena, right? Um, sort of the the downward, yeah. uh, yes. and then the downward dog. Uh, so that was two of the ten that you normally do. Okay. No, no, we did about four, lovey. Oh, sorry. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I lost count. <laughs> yeah, we did cat and cow. We went. We did cat and cow. We did down dog. Okay. Down dog, and then we did. Our little hip flexor, Correct. which we, are, that we would repeat on the other side because you always want to be working evenly with both sides of the body. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question about the salt in the chickpeas. Can I ask it now? Sure, sure, yeah. please. I'm sure, Andreas. Andreas. Yep. So, like I said, I don't really cook. Um, my husband is the cook in our household. Um, and when we make chickpeas here, yeah. I find that we have to add quite a lot of salt to bring flavor out. Mm -hmm. um, are the ones in the can, are they, are they in salted water? Let me just check for you. The um, same so these with... ones... Yeah, they should be in brine, I think. Yeah, you can get them in brine or water. Um, these ones were in brine. Um, so they'll already be have yeah, they already have some salt in it, and I think um, with the, the barbecue sauce as well, that's got a little bit of salt in it, so all the flavors start to come out with that as well. Um, with the yeah, dried ones, the I same imagine you need to add the salt though. Yeah, because the same thing happens when we when I cook dal, unless I add loads of salt, yeah. then it, it, the flavors don't really come out so well yeah 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 i think yeah when i've made dough as well um with the lentils as well i like to add quite a bit of salt um but if you add it to cooking then at least some of it will cook off as well um so you don't need to be too conscious of that i suppose but um yeah with this dish i have i found that i haven't, I haven't really needed to add um, any extra added salt mm. thank you um, this is pretty much done now um the sweet potatoes are finished cooking in the oven so that's alright. You want to just assemble it now and show us yeah, what it looks like? Right. Yeah. Okay, so you get a bowl out. The, the, in case people are wondering, sweet potatoes have an awful amount awfully great amount or a lot of lot of um not awful but in a in a good way a lot of vitamin c so it's very sort of immunity boosting thing to have uh, especially yeah, in the time of covid as well um, sweet potatoes are really good to cook with yeah 
So it's a it's a it's a very good sort of. Um, I, I know it's uh, harder to find in in our part of the world, Serena in, in India in Sri Lanka, but India has a similar thing. We call it uh, uh, it's a yam. Uh, so we we have it here, uh, but it is not as um, you know orange. It's it's sort of a pale whitish white. yellow. Yeah. I found orange sweet potatoes here recently. I've seen them more and more actually. Okay. The less yeah. daily has uh, orange sweet potato. Oh, okay. Celeste Daily on Uber Eats has orange sweet potato. Ah, I saw them. I saw them in the. Oh, I saw them in the organic shop in Narvala <laughs> yesterday. So um, oh, that looks so good. So the yeah, spinach the obviously the uh, nice. puts a lot of water out, isn't it? Sorry, what was that? The spinach has naturally a lot of water in it, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And it kind of makes the chickpeas, it works with the barbecue sauce and it kind of makes it all nice and um, like it makes it nice and saucy as well. Okay. Um, so just the soup potatoes that add. You just roughly add your sweet potatoes on top. On top, okay. And yeah, I don't know if you can see that very well. Wow. Oh, wow, that looks pretty good. That looks very appetizing. Yum. Yeah, it, it's really good. It's one of my favorite dishes. It's, it's quick to make, and um, it's actually 25 grams of protein in this as well. So on a whole foods plant-based diet, some people wonder where you get the protein from um, without animal products. Um, but this just goes to show you can have a high fiber and high protein meal um, in around 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, which is what, which is how how long it took to cook you. I mean, you you pretty much started from scratch. We saw we showed the yeah. entire uh, the process, uh, and uh, and that looks like a a really good. I mean, I think you'll be pretty full eating two uh, eating that whole bowl. I think that, that that's yeah. that's for when you're really hungry. You can easily split that with somebody else if you were, uh, yeah. you know, not that hungry. Yeah, that's that's great, Andres. So, um, uh, oh, sorry, I just have a quick question. Sure. Andres. Andres, uh, uh, what advice do you have for people who say, oh, we're working out, we're bulking up, and because of that, we can't be vegan yeah. because we need to eat like eggs or chicken or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I, I had that same limiting belief um, a few years ago. So I've been um, vegan for just over three years now. Um, and back then, I used to have meat was kind of the main basis of every meal I had, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but the, the thing... The thing most people don't understand is that there is protein hidden. It's not even hidden. It's just not marketed as much as animal-based protein. And it's all to do with marketing, really, where people have these um, beliefs from. But, for example, a can of chickpeas um, has... I can just show you in the can right now. A can of chickpeas has about 18 grams of protein. So when you partner that with other um, sources as well, sweet potato, um, lentils are great sources, beans are great sources um, of protein. It's just adapting our kind of mindset of how we view food at the moment. Um, experimenting in the kitchen to make it all taste nice. Um, but you can you can definitely achieve your protein goals. At the moment, I, I, um, I'm trying to put on some muscle and I'm hitting at least 150 grams of protein a day. So it can definitely be achieved. Um, there's vegan protein powders as well if you do um, struggle a little bit, but soya milk, is um, an easy swap to make. That's just got just as much protein as cow's milk um, and less fat. So it can definitely be done just with a bit of planet. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 clearly, I think if you've watched uh, Game Changes, uh, any fears of protein uh, are dispelled with uh, with uh, with that uh, documentary on Netflix. I highly recommend yeah. people watch that if they're concerned. Um, so, um, Andreas, uh, you 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 show a recipe or menu a day sort of thing on on your channel. Uh, can you speak a little bit about your channel? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I will usually post uh, one recipe a day, or if it's not a recipe, it's usually um, some sort of fitness video or something to do with mindset, such mental health as well. Um, but it's predominantly uh, recipe based, all um, whole, whole food recipes. Um, the majority of them are high in protein and healthy. I've got a couple of treats on there that I'll post as well. Um, but predominantly, it's a high protein, healthy whole, whole food recipes. Um, I'm on kind of Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. 
um, and it's at vegan Chris. Um, so you can give me a follow there, um, and I pretty much post daily. Yeah. Great. And Serena, if if you people were sort of, uh, I know you're going to show up a couple more uh, movements, but uh, if people are sort of keen, uh, I, I'm I'm sure that you do all of this online now, given the pandemic. So. I, I know that people in Sri Lanka obviously can take, you know, use of your time easily enough uh, uh, on a sort of a, a decent hour. But um, are you open to sort of people from across the world potentially taking signing up and taking classes as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I teach group classes. Um, my morning classes work for people in Australia and my evening classes work for people in the UK if they're free at lunch time or so. Um, okay. But I also teach, I teach a lot of one-to-ones. I'm teaching quite a lot of people in Europe at the moment. Um, and I just make that work with, um, with their schedules. Um, I'm used to waking up very early in the morning. So. Oh my God, Andrea, stop doing that. <laughs> That's just no, not no, fair. please do that. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> Proof is in the eating. Uh, Katika, you want to put the link down for Serena's uh, classes as well? Yeah, um, Serena, do you also have like an e-learning course or? Yes, I've got, so I've, I've just actually launched, um, it's called your Personal Resilience Toolkit. Um, and it's a online learning course with mindset practices, uh, journaling practices, meditations, breath work daily rituals, asana and affirmation, all kinds of uh, stuff all packaged in, in one place with the sole purpose really of giving ourselves tools to deal with all of the change and um, craziness that um, the world has thrown at us in the last <laughs> year or so. Um, Kathy, I don't know if you have that link, do you? Uh, I might. I, I'll look it up. So, Andreas, how are you staying sane during the lockdowns? Sorry, what was that? How are you staying mindful and sane during the lockdowns? Do you like work out at home or do you? Yeah, um, I mean, I try and go on daily walks and I'm fortunate enough to have some uh, free weights at home as well. Um, so, I try to work out most days at home. Um, I usually try and wake up. Uh, quite early if I can get uh, a little run in as well that helps getting out in nature as much as I can to be honest I don't really live too close to nature um, it's pretty much mainly in the city but when I can get to a park um, or amongst some nature I try to do that as well great did you find that being vegan uh, was easier for you during the pandemic or did you find it more challenging um, to be honest, I've, I think over the last three years, I've kind of got used to um, the cooking aspect. So it hasn't been too difficult. We had a period over here in the pandemic where there was limited supplies in supermarkets. So actually getting plant milk, we were limited to um, purchasing only three at a time. And because there's six of us at home um, drinking plant milk, we can kind of go through three cartons a day. So that was one of the main limiting things. But apart from that, um, I think the only troubles that I find sometimes, luckily enough in London, we have a lot of opportunities to eat out vegan. Um, when you go out to more rural areas, eating out can be a little bit more challenging. Um, but the supermarkets offer a lot of variety of stuff now, so it's fairly quite, um, it's fairly easy to, to accommodate for that. So why did you switch to being vegan? Uh, initially, so um, at the beginning, as I said before, I used to eat a lot of animal products. Um, and in myself, I did my energy, um, I was at university, so I was in my second year of university, um, and my energy levels were quite low, um, and I noticed I put on some unwanted weight as well. So um, in the summer, I was just curious, and I was on Netflix, and I came across the documentary of What the Hell. Um, I gave that a watch, I'm sure you guys have probably seen that as well. Yeah. Um, and then I did a little bit more research, and I started substituting in some more plant-based meals, I think at the time initially I was still eating um, fish and eggs um, and then after about a three month period I phased those out of my diet as well um, I went full vegan. Initially it was solely based on um, how I felt um, as a person and it just, I just felt better with my age levels and then I started learning about the ethical side of it all with the animals and also the benefits um, on the environment 
and the sustainability aspect of it as well. I mean, that's kind of what has made me continue. I think once you understand those aspects, it's what makes you stay consistent with it as well. Uh, similar to my journey as well, five years ago, no, no, four, four, four and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, so similar. I also watched What the Health and then decided to sort of cold turkey myself out, uh, uh, out of stuff. Um, started with giving up dairy in 2014, lost a bunch of weight, just getting giving up dairy. Uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, then the vegan uh, was four years ago. So I haven't really looked back since then. But um, let's find it where you are in relation to, because over here we have a lot of, for the transition phase, meat substitutes and things like that are, are really easy to get hold of now. How's yeah. it like um, kind of where you guys are? Do you have so a lot it, of meat substitutes so it, and stuff? Yeah, so India, um, I mean, it, we, we have a mostly vegetarian diet, with, but lots of dairy. So pe there are there are lots of people. Who, so the vegetarian options are, are tremendous. So if you can even eat vegetables, uh, you know, if you stay off the sort of the curd and the, the ghee and the things like that, you can definitely get um, food which is vegetarian and, and by default vegan if you are careful. Uh, and so that was not a problem. Uh, you're right about the meat alternatives. However, there are a lot of companies now that are actually manufacturing in India. Um, and so there are those options also coming on board, uh, burgers to chicken nuggets to all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there is uh, definitely that uh, becoming more available on almost, uh, you know, weekly or monthly basis here of another company that's sort of uh, come into the scene. Yeah. Um, and there are some imported uh, stuff that's available here as well, uh, but a higher price point. So yeah, I, I think there's much more awareness of the of of things. I think uh, India will probably be three four years or three to five years behind the global curve on this. Uh, but uh, generally, I think uh, when you tell people in, in India that you're a non-vegetarian, what they usually mean by that is that they eat meat one, uh, once or twice a week. Um, yeah. And where I'm originally from in Sri Lanka, if you say you're non-vegetarian, that means you eat meat, meat three times a day. <laughs> so, you know, some form of animal product is in all the food you eat, as you well may have discovered when traveling in, in Sri Lanka. So um, yeah. I, I think the quantities of meat that's even eaten uh, in India are substantially less. However, with rising affluence, it is growing, right? So that's the problem. And with India's population and China's population, they can't afford to have more people eat meat. The planet will just collapse. Uh, it's all already on its way there. It will just uh, fast track itself to extinction. So we can't afford to do that. So yeah, in India and China, are both hotbeds of, you know, sort of the oil protein space for that reason. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Cool. So Andres, you want to join us for the last couple of uh, poses that Serena is going to do? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we'll end it with the last couple of poses. I'll, I'll watch all three of you. <laughs> okay. So we got to back into our down dog, didn't we? So, yeah. We yeah. got back into our down dog. We're back in our down dog. And the next thing, I'm going to have to move my screen. Give me a second. It tilts this up. Lovely. The next thing we're going to do is a big step forward with our right foot this time we're going to keep our back leg down i mean up not down and we're going to lift up through the upper body bringing the arms above the head you can just stay here if you want or you can take a little lean back say that again you can't see my hands no no no, no. Lavi can pretend to lift his hand. Oh, okay, go for it, Lavi. Pretend. And we'll bring it down. We can step it back into that down dog. And we're going to do the same movement with the other leg. So stepping left foot forward. You're balancing on the toes of your back foot, bringing that arm, uh, the arms up by your ears. And if you want to shift your gaze, you can look up towards the ceiling. It changes the balance. And you can lean it back slightly, opening the heart. Let's come back. Oh, are you struggling? Step it no, back. No. Kathika, if, well. can, Kathika, if you can put the focus on Serena, it'll be easier for other people to follow. Yep, do that. There we go. 
we'll finish by walking our feet in, lengthening our spine and folding forward. And I'll just move my camera again. We come into our standing forward bend. I'm going to lean forward, bring the weight over the toes and lift the hips. Bend the knees and we're going to roll up through the spine and come up to standing, which you can't see. And as we stand, we're going to just ground through the feet, find our connection with Mother Earth close the eyes for a moment. Let's take two or three deep breaths in and out. And then we can bring the hands to the heart, open the eyes and say Om Shanti, which means that I wish you peace. Om Shanti. Om Shanti it is. <laughs> Andres, thank you for joining us. I, that was very nice of you to actually do the movement. Thank you for doing <laughs> After the that session. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, uh, both uh, Andres and, and uh, Serena for, for joining us today on Mindful Mondays. Uh, that looked like a, a completely appetizing recipe, so definitely want to try that. Uh, Andres, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, on a Monday afternoon for you and Serena for a Monday evening or night time for you. Uh, and on behalf of Pandemic Punditry oh, and, oh, and, oh, and Kartika for actually doing the routine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just hoping you had to catch your breath or something, but obviously <laughs> clearly you don't need to do that. <laughs> I would be panting by now. <laughs> so, so I do need the yoga more than she does, but uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening and uh, this afternoon. Uh, wish you all a great rest of the week. Cheers, thank, you. Oh, thank you, Andres. Thank you. I'm going to try to over the weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.